You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Gold, crude oil, corn, soybeans, and more. With so many tradable products, the futures options market can be an intimidating place. How can you possibly keep track of the latest trading developments across so many different products? Don't worry, we've got you covered. Welcome to This Week in Futures Options, the program designed to help active futures options traders stay on top of this ever-changing marketplace. Each week, we'll break down the top trades, hot products, volatility explosions, and much more. This Week in Futures Options streams live every Friday at 1.30 p.m. Central, so be sure to check out our live stream via the Mixler app. That's M-I-X-L-R. Or join our live chat room at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. Whether you're an experienced veteran or a newcomer looking to separate the wheat from the lean hogs, this week in Futures Options has the information you can't find anywhere else. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by Quick Strike Options Pricing and Analysis Software. QuickStrike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy-to-use web-based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page-level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. QuickStrike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. Quick Strike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about Quick Strike at Bantix.com. That's B A N T I X.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Quick Strike One. That's Q U I K S T R I K E One. This week in Futures Options is also brought to you by CME Group, the world's leading and most diverse futures and options exchange. CME Group's markets help individuals and businesses around the world manage risks and seize opportunities. CME Group offers the deepest and most liquid options on futures across all asset classes, including interest rates, equity indexes, foreign exchange, energy, agriculture, and metals. For more information and educational resources about futures options at CME Group, visit cmegroup.com slash options. And now, get ready to break down the latest futures options trading activity. It's time for This Week in Futures Options. All right, everybody. That music means we're back. It's time for TWIFO this week. In Futures Options, a program where pretty much as the name sums it all up, we talk about the week that was and still is from a futures options trading and trending and volatility and skew and open interest and all sorts of fun perspectives. My name is Mark Longo from the old optionsinsider.com. If you haven't been over there in a while, check it out. It's kind of fun. I like it. I think you'll like it too. And of course, from the old Options Insider Radio Network. And of course, for all you hardcores, we welcome you every Friday, 1.30 p.m. Central, 2.30 p.m. Eastern, Via the old Mixlers, grab that link, set it, and forget it, and you too can chime in, not just with this show, but with Volviews, with Option Block throughout the week, follow the live stuff we might do in other days, maybe an interview is going to sneak in there, you never know what you're going to get. So grab it, follow us on Mixler, set it, and forget it. And of course, however you listen live after the fact, hit us up, questions, comments, insights, pearls of wisdom, mockeries of Nick's Skype profile, all sorts of fun stuff. We like it here on the old Twifo. And speaking of which, so the aforementioned profile, I am joined, as always, by my cohort, my partner in crime, the futures options yin to my yang, the Kylo Ren to my Darth Vader, Mr. That'd be both dark side, but one's infinitely cooler. Of course, 
talking about Mr. Nick Howard from Bantix Technologies and the creator of a little platform we like to use around here called Quickstrike. I like that, Mr. Nick. You like being the Kylo to my Darth Vader? Well, I am admittedly not a Star Wars guy, so I don't know if I do or not. So uh, how about... That was uh, a slight. Kylo Ren is nowhere near as cool as Darth Vader. I'll, I'll just fill you in uh, on that level. There, there we go. That's, so what, see, that's what you get I for having can't... all daughters in your house. You're not up on the Star Wars lingo, sir. Well, there, there, are, there are women who love Star Wars, just not in my house. So uh, that's, uh, that's okay, though. It's okay. To each <laughs> their own stormtrooper, right? I don't know there much about Star there Wars. You go. I probably haven't even seen all of the Star Wars, to be honest with you. Really? If you want to talk, if you want to talk Harry Potter, seen every Harry how, Potter. How have you had a career in technology and not somehow seen all the Star? And that's, that's, so two things seem incongruous to me, sir. They, well, I, I don't know. I don't. I didn't like Star Wars, but I could talk Harry Potter till the cows come home. So if anybody has any Harry Potter stuff, let me know. Fire away. So I guess that I'm would ready. make that would make me the Voldemort to your Dumbledore. How about that? That'd be Nemesis. That's much better. That's much more appreciative. But <laughs> I don't know who's who here. Who's here? I'll take Voldemort. I'll go dark side. That's kind of you go dark side. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll even go. I'll, I'll even go with team. Snape because. He sort of traveled on both sides, and that's kind of how I feel about myself. I've only, so. I've only read the first book and seen the first movie, so I think he was kind of like, uh, he was kind of both sides. You're right. So we shall, yeah, so I'll, we shall see. I, we'll, we'll, we'll progress further into the books, and I will know more. I'll, of change, these, my, these I'll change my profile picture to Snape on Skype now there instead of there the cartoon like that I have. All so right, sir. So where, what are you feeling? We got a lot of places that are, that are lighting it up this week. So what are you feeling in your bones? Where do you want to start? You want me to spin the wheel and we start something? Well, I'm going to I'm going to give some uh, props to uh, uh, John Nelson and Eric Norland because John sent me Eric's latest uh, video because I hadn't watched it yet. He goes, you got to watch this. So I watched it. So Eric talked a lot about um, La Nina and the change in the water temperature those, down. Those uh, guys love those El Ninos and La Ninas. They love it. Well, it's a, it's a La, La Nina right now. And apparently the water is one degree centigrade colder, which has an opportunity to cause some problems for the crops, which would potentially increase the volatility of our, our, our corn, wheat, corn and beans in particular. So I think let's talk there because he, he did, he, I'll, I'll reference some of this stuff. He, we have been talking about how low ag vol is. You know, he made some references to it. So let's, let's revisit ag vol in general, corn and beans, talk about what it's looked like over time, how it is. And, and then for the little I know about my La Nina expertise i'll just defer to eric and everybody should watch that video um we can uh, we can go we can start there what do you say yeah people did like when we talked a little bit of ags last week they the ag lovers coming out of the closet so to speak there uh, nick so apparently people like the ags so we'll throw we'll throw them a bone we'll get them a little bit of uh, ag action uh this week sir well why do we say we start in the uh in the old beans because uh they were moving this week especially the, the soybean meal we don't talk the options on that, but the Serbian meal is actually topping our list of movers and shakers this week, with uh, at least coming into today. This isn't through uh, this afternoon. So coming into last night, uh, Serbian meal was up nearly 4%, 3.9%, and the old beans themselves up about 2.3%. So of the top five on the movers and shakers, uh, actually, and wheat was number four, and soybeans coming in number five. So uh, yeah, ags and soybean meal number one. So ags were moving this week. So let's go out there and pull up our old friend soybeans. By the way, Hey, you guys can do this yourself, cmegroup.com slash twifo, or head on over to bantix.com, B-A-N-T-I-X. Click on the sign up for Quick Strike link there, and you could do all this cool stuff and a lot more if you go into the old Quick Strike version there by Bantix. You can do a lot of more cool stuff. And you too can follow along. Make sure if you're listening after the fact, listeners, you go to that expirations tab, top left corner of the page there, and uh, make sure you, uh, you play with it to make sure the settings are uh, in keeping. Uh, with what we're talking about here. If you otherwise, you'll see up to date whenever you're looking at it, whenever you listen to the show, which is fine. But if you want to see exactly what Nick and I are talking about, make sure you change the settings to go through for this Friday. And if you do that, you'll see that the beans had a pretty decent week, up about ten handles or nearly one percent out there, hovering right around the nine ninety level. So just flirting, just shy of a thousand out there in the old beans. And as Nick alluded to, a uh, good week for some premium owners out there, out there in uh, in beans land with Val up strong uh, across the board here so uh, a lot of love here for some beans vol let's see where the options love actually by the way nick open interest up nearly 11 percent this week 10.6 percent so people liking themselves some beans i guess that's why they were so excited we were talking beans last week the magical fruit indeed here we're uh, getting a lot of love here on old twifo this week if you're asking us us we're 
are the old, where was the action this week? Where was, where were people trading it up? Number one with the bullet came out here in March with, uh, with the old March pars, the 1,000 calls. Surprise, surprise. People like their even numbers, their even levels. I don't care what the product is. Could be corn, could be wheat, could be soybeans, could be the indices, could be crude. People like even numbers. It's just a, just a psychological thing of us mammal humans. And uh, number one with the bullet here, the par calls here in March doing 21,500 contracts. The lion's share coming actually yesterday, 8,700 on Thursday. The rest kind of evenly spread throughout the week. A lot of back and forth action, as you might expect, and people coming in, opening, closing again. So net only about 1,600 opening on the week. So a lot of churn and burn coming in on that par strike throughout the week as the beans flirted with it, retreated, dirted with it. Are they going to hit it? Are they going to cross it? Are they going to go back, retreat? There are all kinds of drama. And uh, the beans lighten it up on the par strike. Then we come off a little bit for number two, the 1020. So calls were still where the action was, 17,500 of those lighting it up again on Thursday with the big move and beans was hitting 8,000 contracts going up there. The rest kind of even throughout the week, about 3,000, a little bit shy, about 2,800 going up opening on the week of this week. So again, a lot of back and forth action on the pars and the 20s, maybe a little bit of vertical spreading going on between the two of them as well. Puts were not forgotten, though, listeners. The 980 puts coming in number three on our top uh, soybean options action list this week with, again, Thursday, 7,500. So Thursday was the big options day here for soybeans. Uh, so almost half of all the paper in this strike going up on Thursday. The rest, about almost 4,000 today, and the rest kind of piecemeal throughout the week. Uh, about 2,000 of that opening. So, again, a lot of back and forth on all these major strikes out here in, uh, in March out here in good old beans. Let's move on a little bit and see what else we can find. Number four, we got some 1010 10 calls, also active, 12,000 and change. We can move on out here as well to, these are the May, these are the May 1040s, also pretty active. About nearly 12,000 of these going up here this week. Uh, the lion's share of these actually come in on Wednesday, 3,000 and change. It actually was pretty even throughout the week, uh, most of the volume. So no spike on Thursday for these 1040s out here in May. Doing, I said, 11,715, nearly 4,000 of that opening. So decent action in May. Of all the paper going up this week, about just a little bit under half, about 48.5% going up in that uh, March contract there. So that was where most of the action was. Interesting to see some of the uh, some of the weeklies still getting some love, about 980 puts trading 1,500 times in the weekly. So the weeklies perhaps not quite the afterthought in the ags that they are in some of the other products. Let's do a little scrolling as we are wont to do here, Mr. Nick, to see if we can find any funky outliers, any weird paper that was uh, lighting it up out here. Let's go out here to, what do we got here? This is Nove 2018, and we got the 1,200 calls looking a little active here as well. So Nove 28, so Nova this, Nova this year, 20, uh, 1,200 calls doing a little bit of a little action this week, uh, spread pretty much throughout the week, doing a total of 5,100 contracts. Uh, the lion's share almost half coming on Monday, uh, and then the rest kind of scattered throughout the week. Only 28 going up today, so not a lot of love for these calls today, but still 5,000 of these Nob 1,200s lighting it up. Again, back and forth, so it wasn't like someone was opening uh, uh, early in the week or anything like that. It was kind of only 600 contracts in that opening, so back and forth on the 1,200s in, uh, in November as well, which is... Kind of interesting. When I first saw that paper, it looked like it was pretty much someone just uh, buying a bunch of calls on the upside, but that is not indeed the case. So a lot of interesting stuff out here. Mr. Nick, what caught your eye from a vol? I mean, the vol's obviously up. <laughs> what caught your eye out there as well as from a skew perspective out here in the old beans? Uh, let's see. I'm going to put out a uh, – tweeting out a uh... – Historical volatility chart right now, so people can, if anybody's listening live, they can take a look at that and see what we're going to discuss while we're here. Um, what caught my eye with the beans? Well, I want to go back to the comments that I made in the beginning where uh, I mentioned Eric Norland's uh, video that came out yesterday, and he was talking about how low the volatility was uh, in, the, in the beans and the corn. And when he was likely making his video, we were definitely on on oh, absolutely probably on the absolute lows that we had seen over the last at least from the historical data that we have 
immediately available within QuickStrike over the last five years. Over the course of the last few days, we've we've seen a little bit of an uptick, but we're still very low in terms of the overall volatility in the market. So I think to to reiterate or to touch on some of the points that he was mentioning, and again, I'm I'm no weather expert, and I've all my El Nino and La Nina stuff has come from Blue Putnam and Eric Norlin over at CME. So uh, that's the extent of my uh, of my weather uh, anomaly experience. But you know, his the the comments that he was making was just how vols low. The cold water tends to have uh, an effect, an obvious effect on the weather, which, which will in turn to affect the supply, which could lead to an increase in the volatility of, uh, of the commodities, right? So, and and I think that it's it's not quite as clear cut as it used to be, only because over over the course of history, when these La Ninas or El Ninos were out. Uh, maybe the supply was limited to a, a particular geographic part of the world, mainly the U.S. But now, since there is South American supply for these things as well, it's a, it's a little bit uh, less clear what will happen to volatility if the temperature in the water continues to drop and we we have a change in the weather that would cause uh, some cooler temperatures, which in turn would 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 affect the crops. So, uh, I think the whole point of this and the wanting to talk about the eggs is. Uh, to mention that we're we're just on our lows uh, from a from a historical volatility standpoint, even with the uptick on the week, and um, as we always say, it could go lower. But this really seems, given over a five-year period on a 30-day constant maturity uh, volatility, we're near the bottoms. So probably not a place like we uh, not a not a place we want to get big short, but you might want to consider looking at some fundamentals along with the. Uh, along with what's going on in the weather and then the supply numbers and that type of thing, fundamentals from a charting standpoint, and then the regular uh, practical macroeconomic stuff, right, with the, uh, that you would typically look at with, with the reports and that kind of thing and see if volatility is something you want to start to uh, accumulate at these levels. Uh, as far as uh, you, you, you mentioned already that we had an increase in vol, and you already mentioned I wanted to make sure we touch on the fact that there was a, a pretty decent uh, amount of weekly contracts that traded, so probably quadrupled the amount that was uh, open uh, at the start of this week, uh, almost a 400% increase in the week one open interest. That's a seven-day contract, which is great. Um, you know, if nothing else, if the first weekly or the or the, the most – you know, the closest expiration weekly is the one that's getting the most activity, and but it's actually trading. That's a good thing for the weeklies in general. So always a pleasure to see that type of contract because if you're looking for some short-term action, that's where you want to go to the shortest expiration. Um, increase in volatility out to the May contract about one to two, depending on where you probably we'll call it one and one one and change. We if we start at March because that's the first uh, regular uh, contract that's outside of the weekly. When you get inside of seven days, you're going to see a little bit higher volatility jump as we decay because um, the price, if it stays steady, is going to have to be made up in volatility. So uh, we, we don't pay too much attention to the vol in that front co front contract, but just a boost in general. And we saw uh, we saw the calls get. Um, a little, well, probably significantly richer this week, uh, especially in the March contract. If we're looking at our quick, quick skew, uh, we went from a 5.2 to an 11.4 on the 30-day contract. So that's a pretty big jump, uh, even at these low volatility levels. And we saw the puts get cheaper. So we saw a tilting. We saw a widening of the quick skew channel um, from March, April. March and April in particular, the May, we don't see quite as much. So we saw most of that action in the, the first two contracts, the 30 and, practically speaking, the 60-day contracts this week. So um, a little bit of boost. Uh, maybe others are thinking the same thing from a weather standpoint. Um, maybe others are thinking that, you, you know, we can – you know, we saw a little bit of a push up, so there was more of, of an attempt to grab some of the upside, but a pretty significant switch in the uh, in the quick skew numbers. And what I will do is I will, uh, once I'm done talking, I will tweet out the March quick skew so everybody can take a look and see how that has changed. We had a little bit of a dip uh, in the middle of this month, uh, back to where the calls were, even with the puts and even with the at the money for the most part, but we saw the calls get bid again. And that's sort of following the path that we've seen um, for the last three months anyway. So this will go out now, Mark, but uh, that's what we're seeing in the beans. Cool beans. Cool beans, sir, as the kids say. I guess should we keep the Ags Palooza going with uh, some corn as well? Yeah, sure. Let's, let's go. Let's do it. All the people who've been hitting us up. More Ags, more Ags. Here you go. 
You're getting your wish. Careful what you wish for, because we're going all ags all the time, baby. No, we'll squeeze it. We'll squeeze in some others. Don't worry. Uh, but corn also active on the upside this week, as I mentioned, coming into uh, coming into things this week. Corn was. Uh, let's see where they came on our top list. Well, we'll move on. I can't find that right now. For some reason, it's got coming up here, but we're going to move on here to, again, the old uh, corn action. 355 was where uh, the near-term future settled out. Three double out there, up about 1%, so kind of in line with the beans from a percentage term. And once again, uh, Val just getting some love out here. Again, depending where you look in the front contract, Mostly gamma at that point. So it's got seven days to go. So it's a full weekly at that point, at least. Uh, but still, you're feeling a lot of gamma out there more than vol. But as you trend out a little bit, vol getting juicy, getting not, well, not quite juicy, but getting juiced <laughs> out there with a lot of love out here for uh, all these people who've been writing in for some of the other some other commodities like the crudes and the metals. And when are we going to get the vol love? This week came out here in spades in the old ags. Of course, got a little love in the in the crude vol as well. We'll get to that in a little bit. And of course. Uh, in terms of, uh, again, OI, almost up 10% out here in the corn options this week. So just a rock'em, sock'em robots week out here in good old corn. If you're asking us, hey, us, where is uh, where is the number one bit of action? Once again, it is in that March contract, slightly over 50%, 50.8 to be precise, coming in that March contract. And if you're saying, which strike was super hot? Mr. Mark there, well, I would respond to you then with the March 360s, just ever so slightly out of the money calls, uh, doing nearly 40,000 contracts this week. That's uh, that's some action out here. The lion's share coming on Wednesday with nearly 15,000 hitting the tape on Wednesday and a decent amount of opening on the 360s this week, nearly a little over 9,000 or so coming in on this, so about a quarter of that paper opening out here this week. So a lot of action, particularly Wednesday, on the 360 calls. Uh, following behind it, a little bit shy of that 38,000 level, but still pretty impressive. The 350 puts, so you got a nice tight little strangle, uh, straddle, call it what you will out there, old strangle or risk reversal, uh, doing about nearly 25,000 contracts. Uh, the lion's share come in on Thursday, 9,000 of these 350 puts going up five, almost 6,000 on Wednesday. Total is at 24,400. That's actually a lot of churn and burn there with only about 1,100 net opening on the week. So uh, people just coming in and trading actively. Again, we said before, people like these uh, even strike levels, and that's that's pretty much the same across the board, including out here in corn this week. Then we fall off a little bit again for our number three spot, 21, almost 22,000 of the 355 calls. So the three doubles going up uh, pretty actively. Uh, kind of an even tie almost between Tuesday and Wednesday. Both doing about 6,900 contracts on each of those uh, days. The rest of the week uh, kind of evenly split. About 3,500 net opening here on these three 55 calls. It's a pretty tight range this week. 345 puts bringing up our top four here. 15,000 and change there. The lion's share going up on uh, thursday they're not no no uh, no small shakes going up here today as well 5600 on thursday 4700 today again about 1600 net opening here on the week and as we move outside of march see what else is going on nick alluded to that uh, the weeklies are trading in the ags and that certainly is the case with that front week uh, contract uh, the 360 calls doing nearly 3000 contracts this week so weeklies in the ags certainly an interesting story to explore there we move on a little bit farther see july 380s doing about nine thousand contracts out here so again pretty active usually we see strong clusters of liquidity in uh, the ags and we certainly did see that with half of the volume going up in march here but there are interesting spikes of volume uh, kind of across the board we see in these uh, may 360 puts doing fourteen thousand contracts here uh, so nearly 10 percent of the volume going up here in this uh, in this may and indeed, uh, and yeah, this May contract, and then uh, yeah, 380 calls in July going up nearly 9,000 times. So pretty active in terms of funky strikes. Let's see here. If we go all the way out, this isn't that. This is pretty much at the money, but uh, it's decently sized nonetheless. Uh, these are the Dece 2018 350 puts going up about 3,000 times earlier this week as well. I don't see a lot of crazy aberrant outliers out here drawing my eye. Mr. Nix, maybe something caught your eye, and certainly the vol must have caught your eye this week because it was a good week to have some ag vol in your back pocket, wasn't it, Mr. Nick? Yeah, here we go. It's same thing. I mean, we could 
kind of discount that first the, the week one contract. We had a, a kick involved there. But again, as we move toward that uh, less than seven day uh, expiration, uh, we can't pay too much attention to that. But if we go out to the March and the April contract, which has the same uh, days to expiration that we talked about in the beans, we saw again, the, the puts got offered and, and the calls got bid, not quite as significantly as we saw in the uh, uh, in the beans, but from a percentage of the volatility probably ends up being uh, you know, from an absolute number uh, about the same thing. So uh, maybe we're, uh, you know, based on the fact that that the commentary with the weather is the corn uh, is around the corn and the beans, probably not surprised that we see uh, a similar effect in, uh, in here as we did in the beans. Uh, outside of that, Again, I want to just reiterate the fact that, and I think this is the first time you know that I've noticed it. I, I think when we were earlier uh, looking at the at the ags and the weeklies, we didn't see this kind of volume, but we've seen pretty good volume here in in both of these. So, always pretty encouraging. The other the other thing I wanted to mention um, regarding the ags was, you know, everybody, well, uh, people that are are on particular platforms, like if you're on CME Direct and stuff like that, you know that the block execution now goes through CME Direct. Uh, for the for uh, the CME products, obviously, but uh, the AGs started trading uh, on the block as well, and there there have been a lot of uh, scuttle with a, a few block trades that have occurred uh, this week. Uh, one in beans and two in corn that uh, had some fairly significant size on the block, but at a price that was a little bit less juicy than it was in the pit. So I've been seeing a lot of discussion around that uh, and some kind of uh, head scratching from. Uh, uh, the local market maker community as to why that uh, they took place at better prices up on the block. So we're going to have to keep our ear open and see if we hear any more about that. But there do, was, do you remember the strikes some, on those off offhand? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can tweet those out. There's some strangle selling on. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll put those out right now. Uh, there was some strangle selling on uh, Thursday in both the beans and the corn and then again there was some uh i think there was strangle selling today again in the um in the corn so if you the best way to do that and we'll, we'll tweet those pictures out but the best way to do that is to go to semigroup.com slash quick strike and then uh you can find the block trade tool and it's very easy since uh since the AGs don't have a, a tremendous amount that's trading because it's brand new, if you click on the AGs button right away, you can see immediately the corn options that traded. And then if you change the date selector, you'll go back and see what traded uh, yesterday. But that's that's going to be a great tool to keep track of what's going on with some of the bigger. These are pretty significant quantities here. You know, we're looking at uh, 1,100 uh, six times. So, we're, you know, 6,600, 7,000 contracts uh, that went up on the block and the corn a couple days in a row. And then... Uh, similar amount in the beans but that was the big news that uh, outside of the uh, the uh, change in the volatility uh, that we saw just with some of the maybe potential from what we're seeing from a weather standpoint but uh, just sort of the volume and the pricing of some of the ag trades that occurred on the block this week so uh, we'll have to pay attention to see if there's any more news out about that but i i always think it's good to see that people are using the block market to start getting off some of these I know you can, you know, you, you can make the same argument in any contract. The euro dollar has huge block trades that occur, but you know what? There's huge trades that occur in the pit as well. So I think the blocks, um, the block market across all of the asset classes has got, has got to be available. If it's if it's available for one, it should be available for all of them. And I think that's the attempt. And then you know, then it's just a matter of finding out, you know, where you're gonna where you're gonna be able to to do the size that you want to do. But that was the big. Uh, uh, news of interest from uh, from those two markets this week speaking of markets what, what else you feeling sir you feeling uh you feeling metals maybe a little high ho silver you feeling energy we got crude and that gas lighting things up what what's what's on what's on nick's radar this week sir uh let's see uh you made me choose first so i will you know we 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 have to talk about crude don't we? I mean, we, we just talk about crude. I mean, I just happen to have could, it up on my know, screen could, right now. I don't know how that happens. Nat, <laughs> so we could we could look at that gas again too. I didn't pay too much, but I just I know that the volatility spiked uh, a great deal in the front contract. Now it was it was expiring this week, but it was a huge jump in vol because of apparently uh, there was some weather news about uh, 
a polar vortex coming through, which really pushed the prices higher, which really jacked up the volatility in the front contract. So did you hear about that uh, at all? Yes, or, uh, yes, yes, we did. And obviously it was an interesting week uh, for crude, all the crude bulls, loving all these new highs getting out there. WTI setting out the week up, 60, up to 66. Uh, so uh, breaking through all sorts of uh, upside uh, charts and resistances and everything. Bull, crude bulls loving this this little session. So this you know, this ongoing dance between uh, OPEC and domestic production here clearly seems like uh, going in favor of the crude bulls these days, which is which is interesting. Uh, again, the vol, we talked before about vol being kind of a, a sob story for a lot of the crude fans. Well, vol actually getting a nice little lift this week. In fact, uh, uh, the OIV, the, uh, the, the VIX of WTI, uh, up about two handles this week. So it's been a while since we've seen a nice little pop in that. So uh, still in the low 20s, so it's still anemic uh, compared to where it was a few years ago. Uh, but at least if you were, we've said many times, you get movement in the underlying now, so that alone is nice. And now you got a nice little pop in the vol as well. So last few weeks uh, to a month or so, crude's been paying the rent from a, a long premium perspective out here in the options. Like we said, about two and a half to three handles out here, depending on where you're looking in the old future. So good week for crude bull, bulls, a good week for crude vol buyers. All sorts of fun stuff. If you're asking where the action was, 50.2% of the action this week. Again, open interest up 7.2% this week. So that's a lot of action out here in crude. 50.2%, easy for me to say, 50.2% coming in that front March contract with the lion's share of the action. Uh, if you had to pick what you thought was the craziest, biggest, most active strike, what would it be? Three, two, one. If you guessed the March 57 puts, you would be correct. Uh, an interesting strike. I would not have picked that for my number one. <laughs> I would have thought somewhere in the even 60, 65 range, maybe. Nope. 57 puts, number one with the bullet. 37,000 contracts lighting it up. 20,000 coming on Monday, almost 21. Only 101 today. So very heavily weighted towards the front portion of the week there half almost half of that 17,000 nearly 18,000 uh, is pretty much opening so a lot of action on these 57 puts out here uh, which is interesting I'll have to dig into that paper a little bit maybe while Nick is talking and see what was a foot that made that 57 strike so attractive uh, perhaps there were there was like 22,000 of the double puts also traded on Monday as well so perhaps maybe a little bit of a vertical going up could be a roll uh, we'll see but obviously uh, they were both active and that also accounted for our number two strike, <laughs> which is the double puts out here in March. So maybe a bit of a size vertical going up on the blocks there. And that's skewing the numbers heavily towards those uh, 55 and 57 puts followed hot on its heels by the 70 calls. Yes, 7-0 listeners kind of tied with the 60 puts, both doing about 24,000 and change. We'll start with the calls. The calls lighten up 10,000 and change on Wednesday, 9,200 on Thursday, the rest of the week kind of anemic about 3700 of that opening so a lot of action on the 70s 70 uh, nick that just seems like it seems like just a few months ago that seemed like so far didn't it seem like 70 seemed like so far away in crude and now here we are at 66 and suddenly 70 doesn't seem like so remember when the city bank guys had right, the upper right. bound was 75 <laughs> and we were mocking those guys like what, yes. what, what kind of ridiculous nonsense is this and now here we are we're actually threatening it, and uh, who knows? At this pace, we could break that level next week. Uh, so, yeah, 70 is suddenly a relevant strike, whereas before when we saw 70s trade, and it was a crazy outlier, highlighted it, crazy trade of the week. This week, uh, not so much. It's pretty normal. Uh, tied again with these uh, 60 puts, also doing 24,000 and change. Uh, the Lions share actually coming on tied with Wednesday and Thursday, both doing about 6,700 contracts. Nearly 4,000 of that total on the week is opening. And let's do a quick scan here. See what else was lighting it up out here uh, for the week. Any odd strikes, funky trade. 70 calls were active across the board, including in Dece. 7,000 of the 70s trading out there in Dece. If you want weird strikes, the 40 puts. <laughs> I haven't seen that strike coming up in a while. The 40 puts trading it up this week. June 2019, 40 puts doing 9,000 contracts this week. 7,500 on Wednesday, 1,500 on Tuesday. Also some action in the 45 puts. They were doing about 10,000 contracts. The lion's share of both of those uh, strikes are opening. So uh, not, it does, it's, it's weird volume though. So it doesn't look like it's 7,500 on the 40 puts, 45 uh, on Wednesday, and then on the 45 puts to 3,500. So not quite a one by two. And the days are kind of off for the others. I don't know if this volume is related or just coincidental, but uh, it is odd that two strikes so close to each other on the put side would be lighting it up in, uh, in June of 2019, but c'est la vie. 
does seem to be the case. Uh, again, 9,000 of the 40 puts in June, 6,200 of the 45 puts in, uh, in June were lighting it up out there and yeah that's uh, 70 calls again it's pretty much the action mr mr nick will cut your eye out here in an interesting week could crude paying the went re- the went the george went or the rent any way you look at it this week out here uh, in crude wasn't it yeah i mean to to go and follow up on your 57 put uh, uh and, and if you right now the links are open on the Twifo report on the CME Group website. They'll be open for the rest of the until uh, the till the half hour is up here on the show. But um, if you click on uh, on the volume number or the the option that traded for that particular volume on that month, it, you'll open up and see where where all the activity was on a day of the week basis. And the 57 puts had a, a majority of their action on Monday. And I out here on the block tool, which we mentioned earlier, how to get that CME Group dot com slash quick strike. Look for the block trade browser blouser you're on the went and i'm on the blouser block trade browser it's crazy it's friday um, sir we're it's all, friday <laughs> and i haven't even haven't even started uh, having any beers yet so uh, there was a, a a tremendous amount of 50 uh, 55 57 put spreads that were trading out out there on um on on monday so see a five thousand lot a couple five thousand lots uh and they were just and they traded they were trading oh boy they were trading sevens and eights. There was a 55, 60 put spread that traded as well, but lots of 55, 57 put spreads. That has to be somebody rolling that, right? Um, it, it just seems like it has, it's an it has the feel like, of a roll ball, to it. Like yeah, to it, it's it's a strange strike, and there's no way that that volume, that size, that same day is coincidental. That's, it had the feeling of a roll to me. Yeah, right. And there's you know I'm seeing a lot on on Monday, a lot of one by twos in the 65, seven call. Uh, call spread, uh, buying one and selling two, or you know, vice versa, whatever. And the, some of those traded for, uh, um, yeah, they were trading about twenty-five ticks. But uh, you know, th- I, Mark, the, 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 this block tool, it, it, you know, it's one of the few places where you could actually see the flow of the market, right? And uh, and that's why it, it's so valuable because if you're inside one of the trading platforms, you can see what's going on in the Globex. But it doesn't; it's not really there for the for the taking from a from a review standpoint. But the block tool, you can go out there and look and filter and see everything you want to see. And we're we're even going to get better filters where you can like target a particular strike. We haven't put that in quite yet, but that's coming very soon. But um, but yeah, this gives a lot of insight in a lot of this activity on these big number days. It's happening on the block. So, uh, so we'll have to continue to, uh, I'm glad you always reiterate to look out there because sometimes I, uh, just rely on the report and, uh, look less on the, um, because I rely on the report, especially for the day. Cause on the report, like on today, right. We show whether something traded on Globex or the block, but on the previous days we don't show what those uh what those breakdowns are maybe we'll have to switch that over and, and and put a little graphic on there uh so people can see uh where those trades took place as well but let's go to the volatility which is my job as part of the part of the show so uh, you know uh we we say we saw a little bid uh, again uh i'll i'll say we we saw the front contract and, and this isn't something that we haven't talked about or haven't been able to talk about in a positive stamp from a positive standpoint, Mark is uh, we had a 500% increase in the week one uh, crude contract. So it went from 400 and change open interest to 2,800, almost 2,900. So that's a good sign. That's something that we have not, not necessarily yeah, seen. It's been a while since we've seen it. It's been a while. So, so that's always uh, that's always a big plus there. Um, well, outside the front month, right? We we don't give too much credence to the increase in volatility in the seven day in contract, but we had a little bit of a bump in volatility still this week. Although vol is in on the day uh, for the most part across the whole term structure, so it's probably in a little bit in the front and in a, a bit more out on the term. Uh, at least that's well, it's a maybe maybe a little bit more in the in the May and June, and then it starts to flatten out in terms of how much it's off as we go further out. But uh, you know. Same, same old thing, right? We get a little bit of a push up in the future price. Then when we can't sort of follow through in its entirety, we, we jumped up to 66.59 uh, early on Thursday. We came back off later on Thursday. We tried to push back up. We pushed back up over 66 uh, today, and we ended up around 66. So I'm going to say, you know, usually I'm, I'm a bearish Friday, but, you know, we, we made another effort to get past the 66 dollar mark here 
late in the day today. So um, we're really going to have to watch. Not so much for for it to, you know, I think we're going to see a based on the way that uh, the chart looks, maybe we see some churning around the 66, but we might have some upside uh, going forward here in the crude. So uh, if that's the case, we, we probably see vol stay firm uh, early in the week. And, and if we could push a little bit higher with all those 70 strikes that traded Mark, you got to think that somebody's thinking that we're, that we're moving higher. And, and if you click on that April contract, you can see also there was a, a big trade Thursday. And as well as today, uh, uh, the 78 strike traded quite a bit. So, so maybe we, maybe we're finally here, you know, this late day surge to kind of get back to that 66 mark and we get the little so cup and saucer. If we turn around there on Monday, we might have a, might have a chance to push a little bit higher, but you know, vol up a little bit off on the day up on the week. We have some, you know, like we look, look uh, to find each week. We have some high strike calls that traded, which has given us a little bit of a, uh, a bias to the upside. And if we look at the pull call ratios on the April and the May, um, you know, there was definitely more call buyers in that 50 and 80 day contract than there were um, in the front contract in March. It's still put bias. There was more puts than calls. And then it gets flat out in June here. So um, let's, you know, we don't, we don't make any predictions, but look for some churn on Monday or Sunday night churn around 66, maybe, Maybe get a push a little bit higher and vol stay firm and come in on Monday. And if we can keep going, we're gonna we're gonna see a little bit of pop and vol. Um, if we come off again, I think we'll just uh, I think people are gonna wait around and see if we can continue to kind of you know move sideways but up uh, in, in this market. Yeah, speaking of moving uh, up, let's get let's get a little gassy before we get into some other stuff. What do you say, Mr. Nick? Because uh, it was uh, moving a bit this week. Talking good old nat gas out here. We talked about it recently. So all you guys have been writing in. You wanted nat gas. You wanted ags. You're getting. You're getting all of it. On uh, on your Twifo uh, this week, and uh, you know the future's continuing uh, to tick up there, strong between five and seven percent, depending on where you're looking out there on the term structure, the front contract hovering around that three three point one five level out there. And good old Nat Gas Nick was alluding to earlier, of course, so all this uh, talk of uh, polar vortices and what they call it before a bomb bomb uh, cyclone, something along those lines, it's just these crazy terrifying terms, of course, driving up demand. Uh, for all things nat gas, so, uh, vol kind of a bit of a mixed bag actually. Vol actually coming in on some of the some of the terms on the futures and all other terms kind of ticking up a wee bit. Uh, so kind of a mixed uh, mixed story, a mixed signal out there in terms of action. And speaking of action, you look at across the whole term structure. I'm looking at all of the all the months and strikes out here in good old nat gas land uh, this week, listeners. And eighty, almost eighty one percent of all the paper going up in that uh, front March contract there. So a lot of front month action. That tells you things are a little, a little front heavy, <laughs> a, little, a little crazy out there in terms of near-term pops and moves uh, out there in, uh, in the contract. So 80%, nearly 81 coming in that front contract. Of, uh, of the action, too, a, uh, an interesting strike choice, the five. I <laughs> said so we said a lot about 3.15, the five calls dominating the flow this week doing oh 61,000 and change the lion's share 34,000 so over half coming today actually so obviously we don't have oi numbers on that the paper for the rest of the week about 11,000 and change opening net on that strike uh, so active stuff followed hot on his heels number two by the four halves so maybe a funky uh Spread going up, but the numbers aren't lining up though, because you only saw twelve thousand of the four halves going up today. The calls, whereas about thirty thousand went up on Wednesday. So, could be our friend has interesting timing, legged his spread for a couple of days, <laughs> picked up the four halves on uh, Wednesday, doing the other leg on the fives today. We've seen weirder things, but uh, still, not usually how these trades go up. Uh, total of sixty thousand, almost sixty-one thousand going up here on the four halves as well. So a lot of action. So 30,000 of the four halves going up on Wednesday, 34,000 of the fives going up today, both almost totally equal in volume, about 1,000 contracts different. Uh, net only about 4,500 going up opening uh, this week on the four halves. So a lot of just churn and burn on these two strikes as well, which is fascinating. If you had said to me, hey, would you think the five calls would be lighting it up in the future settling out so low? Uh, no, but uh, apparently that's not the case. That's why I don't trade in that gas, because uh, uh, these strikes are, shall we say, intriguing. Uh, coming down to a little bit more reasonable strike of the four and a quarters, uh, doing 40,000 contracts. Uh, that's about 30,000 going up on Wednesday. So maybe that's where the vertical was. It was four half, four quarter, because it looks like about very similar paper going up 
on both of those days. Actually closing on the four quarters, opening some on the four halves, so maybe rolling a little bit, uh, which is interesting. Uh, either way, just uh, funky paper across the board. I can continue to list the strikes. It was mostly calls, listeners. We did see 275 puts uh, doing a fair bit of paper, though, coming in at the one, two, three, what is that, four? That's about number five on our list here with uh, about 32,000 contracts, uh, net only 200 some odd contracts opening. So just a ton of back and forth on those tracks as well. So NatGast and Mr. Nick trading it up this week uh, for size all front month all the time. You don't want to look anywhere else uh, unless you want to see 100 lot of the 275s trading out in, in December or something along those lines. Not a lot going on out there. All front month. So you just that just... That just speaks to how frothy it was this week. What uh, what caught your eye out here in this in this slew of, of crazy paper here in that gas? I might I might just call all in that gas this week my crazy trade of the week. What do you think? Yeah, I think that, you know again this is not what I'm too familiar with, but when you when you listen to the news and you know we saw a pop last week and then you know you hear about the weather weather report and we saw a big pop again from below 50 up above 60 uh uh from from a volatility standpoint with uh you know uh even an increase further today so uh so yeah this is obviously very weather driven we're in the heart of the winter time like you can go out and look at the um you know if you look at the term structure on this thing uh you're gonna see typically uh you'll see a uh a hump around this uh around this time from uh um you know, you you see a higher price in the in the Feb and and in the March, and then you see it taper off a little bit as we go in towards the summer month. But we're seeing our peak here in price is in the February contract. We, we're we're high in March, but not quite as high, and then we drop off considerably in April. So it's definitely a, a supply and demand thing for sure here. And and I guess that's really something that we, you know, we don't discuss too much here. Uh, the crude one seems to be more of a long-term planning strategy. What's consumption? How much is production, right? Those numbers are are always being watched. And, and, and this one is obviously much more seasonal and weather related. So it's probably something going forward in winters if we're blessed to be available and doing the show in future winters that we'll just have to start paying attention a little bit more into the seasonal stuff um, and see how it uh, and, and see how it acts. But yeah, we're definitely uh, we we'll definitely see the reaction to the to the weather causing uh, an increase in the price, but yeah, that five strike that is kind of surprising, and it looks like that was part of uh, uh, 375, three and three quarter five dollar uh, call spread that was trading quite a bit here today, and uh, that's when I think uh, a majority, let's see, 61,000 of this happened as you mentioned, and. Um, yeah, a big part of it was today, and I think a lot of that had to do with uh, some call spreads that were trading. Not not everything was on the block, but there were some outrights. There was a handful of outrights, 3,000 lot of outrights, 2,000 lot of outrights. So, um, so yeah, the, there's obviously a fear of uh, of weather causing uh, uh, an increased demand. So if we get to five, that would be really interesting, although I think it's seen days in seven and eight, right? It used to be a lot higher. I'm not 100% sure about that, but... Um, uh, we'll, we'll have to, we'll watch that at least for the next month, right? While the weather, uh, continues to be, uh, back and forth here. I'm going to take yeah. a look real 375, quick. 375.5, yeah. that, those are interesting strikes on, on the vertical out there in, in NatGas. Again, I, I don't, we haven't followed NatGas a lot here on the show the last uh, few months, maybe definitely worth second and third looks out here because these these strikes are funky uh the action out here is funky it's interesting you know all these different products have their own rules of engagement and it's always fun to see how that plays out particularly on some of these crazy events and 375 five vertical that's uh that's that's interesting in and of itself if you're a nat gas guy out there maybe you trade a lot of this right in let us know what you think of this vertical and some of the other action we've been seeing out there because nat gas certainly been on our radar a lot more of late than uh it has been of course you know it's a seasonal product we're going to see that now anyway but these uh, additional seasonal elements of the bombs and the vortexes and everything else certainly taking that to a heightened level speaking of heightened we'll round things out here do a little quick hit on all things metals you guys metal guys we won't forget about you but watch out for all the lycanthropes out there aka the werewolves because they're coming at you talking a little silver this week uh, to round things out we always talk gold We'll think we'll mix it up a little bit, talk a little bit of silver. Uh, silver up about 2%. So all you silver bulls out there having a good one. Again, werewolves running and hiding, and at least until the next full moon. Uh, Vol also ticking up out there. We've been talking for a while about metals. You know, when's this Vol going to come back? Uncle Mike maybe a little bit happy on his collar this week. Uh, we'll, we'll see I'll have to ask him. <laughs> uh, is Vol coming up, uh, underlying trending up? That usually works out pretty well 
uh, for your collar, again, depending on the strikes you have on and all that other fun stuff. Uh, moving on out here to what was lighting it up of all the action out here, 60, almost 62%. Actually, open interest up nearly 10% this week, so pretty strong out here in silver options. And a number one with the bullets uh, coming in, 62% of the paper coming in the March contract. So all action again in the front month. Very front month heavy, a lot of our contracts here uh, this week was the 19 calls, uh, which is interesting because silver is settling out around 17 half, up 2%. And yet we're seeing the 19 calls lighten it up 2,000 and change nearly half of that opening. Uh, so again, funky upside strikes. That's another maybe narrative of the show this week, Nick. Uh, funky upside strikes in uh, underlyings that are skyrocketing northward. Not quite as aggressive, perhaps, as the Nat gas, but uh, still interesting stuff. Followed hot on his heels, number two by the 18 calls. Perhaps a little bit more reasonable there. Near out of the money, 18 calls. Doing about 1,800 of those. By the way, of the 19s of that 2,000 and change, 1,400 coming on Wednesday. So most of that action coming on Wednesday. 1,800 of the 18s going up. Almost 1,000 going up on Thursday. Uh, the rest kind of scattered throughout the week. Got some puts there, too, so don't be, don't be sad if the puts are your thing. Uh, we got 18 half calls, first 1,500 of those going up. Uh, pretty much 800 on Thursday, and a lot of those only slightly opening. And then, of course, the 16 half puts rounding out top four here with 1,300 and change. Uh, the lion's share coming actually on Thursday with about 600, and that's pretty much net unched from an OI perspective. So a lot of back and forth trading here in Silverland. And if you are, you want to get really crazy. Uh, we saw 179 of the 30 calls, yes, 3 0, going up in Dees uh, this year. Followed by uh, a whopping 14 lot of the 35 calls in, uh, out there a little bit uh, farther out in July of 2019. So funky upside across the board. Anything catching your eye out there, Mr. Nick? Or are you uh, scared of this one because uh, when, that, when that monthly w moon time comes around, you don't like talking about silver? Uh, I think I, I, I can talk a little bit about it. I'm not too scared of, uh, of, of the silver right now. I just tweeted out a pricing sheet that... Uh, had the uh, I put our pricing sheet in a dollar so you can see what somebody was paying for those 19 calls. It's about a 150 bucks, little little bit of a premium to 150 dollars. So uh, that's where the spend was. But we haven't seen. I don't think we've seen that price in uh, quite a long time. If I go out here and look at the f uh, rolling front month on the silver, um, let's see what we got. We haven't seen 19. When's the last time we saw 19? Uh, well, well, we saw 19 back in the middle of, well, no, I'm lying again, middle of 2016, we went up over 20. So yeah, so we're, we're not, uh, as much as we've been trending around the 17, we've been below 17 for quite some time. Uh, we hit that, but we, we haven't really pushed too high above it, but, uh, you know, so we have some chance. So, uh, you know, back in April, we were 18 and a half. So, yeah, there, there might be some chance to keep going higher here, especially since gold has been – gold will tend to carry the other metals up with it. So gold was off a little bit today, but uh, up still, uh, I believe, on the week. So, um, again, don't watch it all that much, but the fact that the vol is up across the board, you know, that means people are paying attention. And the fact that we're seeing those – Upside calls, and I think at that level, that's probably being you know bought on the offer, no problem. People are saying, I just want that strike, so that's probably dragging the vol curve up a little bit as well. So, um, so this might be, yeah. So instead of just sticking with the gold all the time, we can come in and talk gold and silver and see how this, you know, spread looks and uh, pay a little bit more attention. But uh, you know, still pretty good, 10% increase in open interest. Everybody's got to be happy about that. I can see Uncle Mike's ears perking up right now. He knows we're talking about silver. I'm sure you can just sense it. And he's like, oh, they didn't, they didn't call me up. So we'll have, to, we'll have to get his outlook on his collar. Meanwhile, it's time for us to get your outlook with a little bit of your futures options feedback. It's time for your questions, comments, and insights. It's time for futures options feedback. Submit your questions at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider, stocktwits.com slash options insider, or via questions at theoptionsinsider.com. You can also submit your feedback via our Options Insider radio network mobile app, available for iOS, Android, and Kindle Fire devices. You can even ask your questions live every Friday at 3 p.m. Central via our Mixler chat room. So grab the Mixler app or just search for Options Insider at Mixler.com. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com. 
All right, everybody, it's time for you guys to take the reins. Uh, let's pay it off first with what you guys are thinking. Remember, Nick, we asked him last week, what, what do they want to do? Everyone's asking us about Bitcoin options. Uh, let's pretend they existed. All right, when we wrote this last week, the futures were a comparatively lofty 11,500, last I checked a couple hours ago, so it could, it could move a lot quite about <laughs> in that time. Uh, but it was about 11,000 uh, coming into the shows today, so off about. So the comparatively lofty days of 11,500, oh, how rich they were. Uh, we asked you then, hey, looking out a month, if we had the options, what would you do? Would you buy a 5% out of the money call, buy a 5% out of the money put, sell a 5% out of the money covered call, a.k.a. a put, or just short the future? Mr. Nick, 32% saying buying that put. I'm guessing they had some recency bias there. What do you think, though? This, you know... The, uh, of course, everything crypto got smashed last week, and uh, they probably were just saying, I, I would really want to put. I know everyone was hitting us up saying, when the heck are the options coming? In fact, I think we got someone asking us on the show this week. Uh, so, yeah, that doesn't really surprise me. Does it surprise you, Nick, that the puts won? Uh, I, guess, I guess not. I, I think I'm trying to remember. I think I did, did the covered, seller covered call, but uh, that might have been just as good, to be honest with you. But uh, um, does it surprise me? I, this market is kind of scary scary right it seems like everybody's interested when it's rallying and then when it's when it's not doing anything nobody's interested and it becomes sort of a pariah so it's still a tough one to figure out uh exactly you know people always want to be associated with the winner but when this thing is trending along or going south it doesn't seem like there's as much interest as there is when they're when it's going nothing but uh, up yeah, you know, you're right. Short put could have worked out too. A little bit more uh, sleepless nights in, on that on that one, maybe before it finally turns your way. But uh, it could have worked either way. Yeah, it was interesting. So yeah, about 32% saying buying the put, 27% hot on its heels saying buy the 5% all the money call, 25% saying they just want to short the future, 16% saying selling that 5% all the money covered call. Speaking of options, uh, NEC echoing a lot of people uh, over the last week or two asking us this question. Uh, last week, he says, was crazy, referring to what was going on in crypto. Uh, Bitcoin took a 30% hit. Man, do I need options. I feel you. Uh, any updates on that front? You know, not too much. Not since last week. I haven't, we have, we're trying to get the, uh, the CME, uh, the CME uh, Bitcoin guys on to talk, you know, their thoughts and expectations, how the product's gone so far, what their plans are for the future. So hopefully we'll have an official kind of statement from them coming on the show soon. You can hear it straight from the horse's mouth. In the meantime, on the other side of the front, I did ask uh, the SIBO folks, and they sound like they're not in a huge hurry. They just had their first settlement under their belts. So all of you who voted in our poll a while ago, hoping for like Q1 for options, doesn't sound, at least on the SIBO front, like we're going to be seeing that. They need a couple more settlements, and they also have a hardware, excuse me, technology integration going on over there. They want to get that done before they, they launch any options. So probably not till at least Q2 for them. I can't speak to, again, we'll try and get the CME guy on to give it for himself. So I, I'd be surprised if he could weigh in as well. It seems like they're still figuring it all out over there in terms of what their time frame is. But I would, I would probably, I guessed before, uh, you know, about a month ago when we had our poll question, I said back then, I thought it felt like Q2 to me, and I'm going to stick with that. I think, I think we'll probably see some options from either or both of them by, uh, by Q2 of next year. I don't know, Nick, you have any insight into this you want to share with us? You still feeling Q2 or you, you're feeling something else? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really know the Q2 now, the Q2 felt like that was late, uh, a month ago. And now it feels like it's early today. Uh, <laughs> and I, I was intrigued by what the C, uh, CBO said as well. They, they kind of backed off of the enthusiasm a little bit to see, even though the volume has been good in the future, it's still, uh, it'll, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I haven't heard anything. Um, and it's not like it's, I don't think it's that tough to introduce a new symbol or anything like that and get it trading within uh, on the platforms. I think it's just a matter of whether they can get it approved um, with whatever regulatory process they have to go through. But uh, I will say if anybody's interested in starting to talk about the, uh, the volatilities or what the vol curves might look like in the, in the crypto markets, feel free to shoot us uh, an email at support at quickstrike.net, Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E.net, and I could, uh, you know, start to give you some information of where you might be able to find some of that stuff. So just let me know. There you go. Hit up Mr. Nick. You know where to find him at Quick Strike One. No C in the middle there. And make sure you capitalize that second S, otherwise he won't respond to you. <laughs> He's a stickler uh, for all, all things case when it comes to Twitter. Let's see what else we got here. Um, 
Brian Zinn, uh, he wants to know what the cop, <laughs> Bitcoin questions. Uh, cop reports, he wants to know what the cop reports have the CME in them yet. I don't know if we got the latest round of cop reports yet. Of course, commitment of traders reports, listeners. And I, I'm guessing it wouldn't have changed unless we saw some, some dramatic change in the number. Remember, we talked last week about it, and Nick had some good info on this. Uh, again, we'll get the CME guys on to talk about this directly. Uh, but in general, uh, you know, the number of, you know, of users, independent users, you know, that they can actually cite in the report, the number wasn't there yet. So once they hit that threshold, and we talked about what that threshold was last week. Then they'll start including them in. So we'll soon see the new COT reports. We'll see. Uh, things change. Obviously, this is the last couple of weeks have been pretty active. A lot of people have been slinging the contract. So we shall see uh, how this plays out. Speaking of thing, how things play out, Camper asked us last week if we uh, noticed any interesting patterns in corn ball skew ahead of the crop planting or harvesting. We said we'd do the homework for you this week. Uh, we got a little busy, so we didn't do our homework. Sorry, Mr. Camper. Talked a lot of corn and ags, though, so hopefully you like that. We'll do some research for you uh, in the coming weeks and get some more details on how that skew tends to evolve around. I mean, these, every ag has its kind of its own rules and you know, in terms of the harvesting and planting, and uh, we'll see how corn tends to perform, you know, because those tend to be like the earnings events for the ag, so there's interesting developments there. And a good question. We just haven't had a chance to do all of our homework yet, so I apologize there, Mr. Camper. Oh, here's a comment from, uh, from Jonas Grumble. It says, hope you sold your Bitcoin a long time ago. All the signs of tulip mania were all over this thing. Once options start trading on it, though, I might reconsider. Uh, I'm with you, not, not so much on the mania, but I'm still waiting for the options. I, I'm not going to dive into these things until I got options. I'm, I'm, I'm not an underlying guy, though, so to go figure, I'm an options guy. So when that starts trading, that's when, uh, that's when I'll see it. Hey, Mr. Nick, anything to add here on uh, the top heaviness of Bitcoin, the Bitcoin cop reports, or the fact that I or us, really meaning you, didn't do your corn homework this week? Well, I'm going to reach out to uh, the ad guys over at the CME because they really should have I'm not a, I'm not an ag. I, I can't even, I might be able to tell you when the crops actually get planted and when they get harvested. That might be the extent of my agricultural knowledge, but we should reach out to Steve Stacy and those guys and see if they can help us out with that because they do do uh, the monthly reports on the ags. So they may have some insight that will be helpful for us so we can have our, our spark, our spark notes or our, what are our crib sheet uh, from somebody in the know. Um, as far as, yeah, you know, I don't, people say, well, once the options come in, then I'll start trading again. I mean, it's, if it just kind of dawdles back and forth, it's just like any other number. So there's plenty of things for you to trade right now as it is. I mean, if I give you an idea, if I look at Bitcoin right now on a 30 day option, well, even would you, what, what, what length of option would you trade right now, Mark, if you could trade? options on bitcoin when you do a one day a three day a five day a seven day i, I have to look I, I, I don't know if they launch with the weeklies so i probably have to probably say monthly if they launch with the weeklies i might want to get in on some of those just to get some get some good gamma juice going yeah so on a seven so right now i could tell you kind of roughly just based on what we've been doing from a some calcs standpoint you know an at the money 1100 seven day option would cost you 860 bucks based on what we, we think volatility is on our uh, on our implied skew calculation so um I don't know. That's that's uh, it doesn't seem that bad, right? Yeah, twenty-five delta put would cost you three hundred and forty bucks, and a twenty-five delta call would cost you about three hundred bucks because the skews a little bit. We're seeing that the skews are a little bit uh, um, oriented towards the puts right now, based on our on what we're See, on what we've. That's been what, how long have we been debating that one question, right? How long, where were the yeah, skew line up? And right. I, I, in my gut, I thought it would be the puts, but you never know. You know, call crazies are out there in in uh, in. Uh, in Bitcoin, I'm glad to see that uh, the data is finally backing me up, sir. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. it's not a tremendous difference from a from a volatility standpoint. From a, um, from a, if we're looking, you know, equidistant from the at the money, but there is a there is a little bit of a bit to the push. And we'll have, like I said, if somebody's interested in talking to me about this, please, you know, shoot me a note offline because um, this is uh, this is not related to anything um, uh, with you know, the regular stuff that we cover, but uh, I'm glad to talk about it. But that's, you know, uh, I think, I, I don't know. I, I always look at it like my my interest is clearly it's more exciting to watch it go up. It's less exciting to watch it come down and then go through where you bought it, right? Because that will have a general malaise in the Bitcoin population because everybody, right? As soon as the guy that, that picked you up in Uber starts talking about it, then you know that you it's it sounds like it's that's that's an easy decision to make that you should stop but uh, that seemed to be when everybody started talking about it when we 
it still was a big push even after like Christmas when all the family members were talking about it at dinner and that kind of thing. But uh, it'll kick in again, and I think it'll shake the tree a little bit and get some of the bad coins out there. But, uh, you know, trending around is not necessarily a bad thing. Give everybody a breather and all these places a chance to uh, start trading it and building products around it. No, if that's, if that's the key, the Uber indicator. I think we passed that a long time ago. Speaking of past things, we passed our time here. We've been, you guys send us such great questions. You get us talking, you know, we forget what time it is. But we have fun. We like answering your questions. Keep them coming. We read them all. We try to answer as many as we can on the show, and even though we can't usually fit most of them on. But uh, still send them in. We, we'll answer them right back to you. We'll discuss. Maybe Nick will send you a cool chart. You never know. So send them in. You know how to hit us up at Options on Twitter or Steamy Group. Uh, has it over there as well and nick on quick strike or hit us up uh, info at the options insider.com or by the live chat you guys know how to find us but that music means we're done we gots to go but before we go one last time around the horn mr nick we'll start with you what is cooking in the land of quick strikes or that may intrigue us what's cooking well i talked last week about the new release and you know we're continue to put some uh, new release stuff as i mentioned there's some bitcoin stuff coming so if you want info about that just shoot me a note um and you know, there's going to be a, some a, some great uh, trade building tools that the CME is going to be releasing that we built for them that I think you're going to like with some simulation tools in there. Build trade, simulate some futures movement, do some Monte Carlo simulations. So uh, uh, register, get a trial, get a trial of the full professional version. Look at the quick file stuff so you can see the historicals and, and track up to five years right now going up to 10 in the very near term. So, uh, you know, ask some questions. We probably have what you need and uh, we're glad to help you out. There you go. Check them out and kick the tires for yourself over there at Bantix.com, B-A-N-T-I-X.com. Click on that uh, login or sign up for Quick Strike button there. It's blue. You can't miss it. And once you do that, you get access to all this awesome stuff and a lot more that we don't have a chance to talk about on the show. There's so many reports. We could spend days doing it, but we have to f- squeeze it all in to an hour, even today. We didn't do a good job of that, as you can see. And on behalf of Mr. Nick and our friends over there at CME, we'll get one of them on to talk Bitcoin. Don't worry, answer all your questions very soon. So stay tuned for that. And indeed, myself, I want to thank all of you out there in the listening audience for downloading, streaming, subscribing, sending in questions, making fun of the Nick's photo, all sorts of good stuff you guys do every week. And we'll see you back here next Friday for more of This Week in Futures Options. This Week in Futures Options is brought to you by QuickStrike, options pricing and analysis software. QuickStrike offers powerful and flexible options analysis and pricing tools via an easy-to-use web-based interface. View prices on outright options or spreads with comprehensive page-level analysis controls. Build trades, manage risk, or explore historical volatility. QuickStrike has you covered with market data reports ranging from open interest to the term structure of volatility. QuickStrike is the perfect addition to your trading toolkit. Learn more about QuickStrike at Bantix.com. That's B-A-N-T-I-X dot com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter at QuickStrike1. That's Q-U-I-K-S-T-R-I-K-E-1. The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com 